SIM Equa 125th Anniversary Celebration The Journey On On December 4th, 1893, Walter Goins, Thomas Kent, and Roland Bingham landed on the shores of Lagos, Nigeria in Africa with a vision to bring the gospel into the vast area south of Sahara Desert called the Sudan for years Every mission board in North America and Great Britain had turned them away. The task of reaching the interior was too dangerous, too expensive, too difficult. Yet, Goins, Kent, and Bingham convinced that it was the will of God and that he would provide, set out alone. Thus, the Sudan Interior Mission was born. Whenever Goins heard anyone speak of the Sudan as a close field, he replied, It is a close field because the church has never put her hand to open the door. Their aim was to reach the world city of Kano, nearly 700 miles inland, which was the center of the Sudan. While they were in Lagos, they were told by Brian Rowe, the superintendent of the Methodist mission, Young men, you will never see the Sudan. Your children will never see the Sudan. Your grandchildren may. The three men caught fever. But in February, Goins and Kent set off for the interior along with 20 African porters and helpers hoping to reach Kano. Somebody needed to remain behind to raise funds, handle supplies, and maintain contact. Since Bingham had not fully recovered from fever, this role was given to him. The travelers made good progress to begin with, passing through Ijebuode, Oyo, before reaching Ogbomoso, where they stayed with some Southern Baptist missionaries. In Iloring, Goins preached through an interpreter to a prince and his escort. The two men separated at Bida. Kent went back to Lagos to get supplies. Goins continued north. By about mid-August, Goins and his companions reached the walled city of Old Brinningwari where he waited for Kent to join him. While there, the Emir of Contagora sieged the city, starved its inhabitants into surrender. Goen's porters deserted him, but Tom Coffey, a former slave from Liberia, continued with Goen's to Zaria. Walter Goen's wrote in his diary that Tom Coffey was very faithful to me for having stayed with him during the war sickness and other difficult times after his other workers abandoned him they had to beg for food to survive they reached zaria in late october by this time goens was very sick with dysentery a european doctor with the hausa association's expedition sent goens and coffee back to the coast with a few supplies he was so ill that porters carried him in a hammock they reached Girku in Kaduna State, 45 miles south of Zaria, where Goans died during the night of 16th November or early in the morning on 17th. Tom Coffey took Goans' diary and other valuables back to Roland Bingham. Thomas Kent arrived in Lagos very sick with malaria. He was nursed back to health by Roland Bingham. Bingham asked Kent, is our mission still worthwhile? Kent replied, directly I can get on my feet, I shall go on to join Walter. When he recovered, he set out with supplies to join Goins. When Bingham and Kent said goodbye, Bingham had no idea he would never see him again. Kent reached Bida on October 3rd. He was unable to go further because of unrest. He caught fever and died on December 8th, not knowing that Goins had died three weeks earlier.
After Bingham learned of the death of his two friends, he returned to Canada to try to arouse further interest in the Sudan and to form a mission board. When he told Mrs. Gowans of her son's death, she said to him, Mr. Bingham, I would rather have had Walter go out to the Sudan and die there all alone than have him home today disobeying his lord. Bingham returned to Lagos in 1900 with two other young men, but he again came down with malaria and had to return home. The two men said they would carry on the work but followed him to the next boat. Bingham comments, It would have been easier for me, perhaps if I had died in Africa, for on that homeward journey I died another death. Everything seemed to have failed, and when, while I was gradually regaining strength in Britain, I learned that my two companions were arriving shortly, I went through the darkest period of my life. But within six months of his return to Canada, four people offered their lives to the mission. In 1901, they established the first SIM mission station at Patigi, 500 miles up the Niger River. Here, a Muslim named Nda Lemon gave his life to Christ. He was the first convert in SIM's ministry. A new station was opened when Tommy Titkombe went to Egbe in 1908. The first SIM baptisms took place in Oga near Egbe in 1909. This led to the formation of the first SIM church. Mission stations were soon established elsewhere. At Mayango in 1914, Kaltungo in 1917, Gelengu and Kagoro in 1927, Kano in 1933, and in many other places. Much of SIM's mission work was advanced through medical work and education. The African Missionary Society was formed in 1948. The Association of Evangelical Churches in West Africa was formed in 1954 with over 400 autonomous indigenous pastors. ECWA was registered with the government in 1956. In 1974, ECWA Productions was formed and Challenge Press was handed over to ECWA. SIM handed over all its ministries and properties to ECWA in 1976. The first ECWA president was. The first general secretary was. ECWA has faithfully carried on and expanded the work started by SIM. In the 70s and 80s, many SIM missionaries left Nigeria to serve in Niger and elsewhere. But in the late 1980s, ECWA encouraged SIM to remain as there is still much mission work to do in Nigeria. SIM and ECWA now work together as partners.